Chapter 1 Stinky Finger and Icky Bats sat on two tree stumps at the edge of the Silver Forest, looking down at the snow-covered city. They were thinking about the days before the Spoonheads arrived in their space hoovers and sucked up all the grown-ups. I miss Mum and Dad sometimes, said Icky. I don't, replied Stinky. They were always going on at me. Every single Christmas they made me change my undies. What's wrong with that? asked Icky. I'm very attached to my undies. That's because of the mould and fungus, said Icky. This was very true. There was a lot of mould and fungus in Stinky's undies, but not as much as there used to be, because little animals had moved in and eaten most of it. Only Icky Bats could stand the stink of Stinky Finger. A cricket ball had smacked Icky on the nose and destroyed his sense of smell. I miss my uncle Jav as well, said Icky. Yeah, he wasn't too bad, admitted Stinky. He didn't deserve to be sucked into the Spoonhead space suit for all eternity. He gave me this, said Icky, pulling out a feather. That's nice. It's a lucky feather. He said it might save my life one day. Stinky looked hard at the feather. How do you think a feather could save your life? he asked. Icky thought about this for a while, but he never thought about anything for long. Did you have any uncle, Stinky? he asked. Not exactly, replied Stinky. How could you not exactly have an uncle? Well, there was Uncle Nero, but he was just a head. Just a head? He was very sick, so he had his head frozen and connected to to the internet or something. Did it still work? asked Icky. I think so, replied Stinky. Icky looked out over the fresh, white city, his mind alive with thoughts. If the spoonhead sucked up all the grown-ups, did that include your uncle's head? I don't know. I never thought about it. Let's find out, shouted Icky, jumping to his feet. Stinky wasn't so sure. He could always think of ten thousand reasons not to do anything. Can't we just stay here? he said. Stinky, said Icky. We've been sitting here for three weeks. We've got to have an aim in life. That was true. Now that school had closed down and blue soup ran everything, there was no particular need to get out of bed in the morning. With no grown-ups around, there wasn't even any point in causing trouble. If you didn't invent your own aim in life, then life was a bit like, well, death. OK, said Stinky. He tried to rise, but the gubbins on his trousers had mingled with the gubbins on the tree stump and he was stuck fast. Icky kept a small saw for accidents like this, so they were able to get Stinky up, with a thin circle of tree still stuck to his backside. Luckily, this blended in with all the other rubbish hanging from his clothes. The two great mates set off down the hill towards the city. They weren't exactly sure where they were going, but they did know that Uncle Nero had lived somewhere near the council tip, and the council tip was somewhere near the old flea market, and the old flea market was somewhere near the pet cemetery. If only they knew where the pet cemetery was, or if it still existed. The spoonheads had moved quite a few things around, sometimes for no reason at all. If we had a map it would help, said Icky. If we could read maps it would be even better added Stinky. Suddenly, Icky and Stinky stopped dead. Ahead of them was a giant video screen. Stinky Fingers House of Fun, written by John Blake and read by Alistair McGowan.